Hi there, this is Derek Murphy from creativity.com. We're going to take a look at the best free fonts to use in book design. And it's kind of a trick question. You might be searching or Googling for free fonts to use for book design. Um, I will dissuade you from some ideas that you might have and tell you what you need to do to make your book design look professional. We're talking about interior book formatting and we're going to talk about print formatting because Print and ebook formatting is not really the same thing. And for ebooks, you don't really want any special free fonts. You want the basic serif or sans serif font that's default on the device. So you don't want to embed any fonts or set special um, settings. And for print books, we're going to start here with this gallery of print formatting examples so I can talk about print book formatting. But the th basic thing with print books is that you want your book formatting to match your book cover. So you don't want to start thinking about formatting first and you don't want to format your book before you get a book cover because you want the style to match. It's better to have a very simple interior book formatting style that doesn't match your book than to have a cool style for your interior with a lot of special flashy fonts um, that doesn't match your book cover because you, you want it to match or you want it to at least not um, contrast too much. If you have one style for your book cover and you have a total different style for the inside of your book, that's going to look really unprofessional. So that's why I would normally steer you away from um, free online book formatting templates. I have a bunch on this site on DIYBookFormats.com. Um, let's see. But the tricky part of this I've seen happen is that I, I put these up so that indie authors can use these book formatting templates to format their interior books. And they work, but you should still change the fonts to match your book cover style, or else use very basic fonts that don't conflict with your book cover style. And what I've actually seen do, like this one is basic serif font. This is um, Minion Pro and Bliss 2. It's a serif font for the chapters. That's fine. This would work for almost any book cover, and it's not really going to conflict. But if you use, for example, something like this, um, or maybe something like this, which I've actually seen someone do, is just use the exact same font that I used in my template, it's going to conflict with your book cover design. And that's a problem. So it's better to use something very simple that doesn't conflict than it is to buy some online interior formatting template um, that doesn't match your book cover at all. And what you actually are supposed to do with these I made these kind of too flashy. I threw in some design just kind of for um, example, because these are some things you could do with formatting that makes it look cool. You don't want to just use somebody else's special um, decorations or fonts if it doesn't match your book cover, because that's going to look crappy. What you do want to do is take one of these templates, probably the most simple one, um, which would be something like this, and this you could use as is, or you could change this chapter font to match your book cover font. And that's really all you're going to want to do, is either use a very simple serif or sans serif for your headers. You might get away with something bolder like this if you were doing a thriller. Um, but in most cases, keep it really simple or match your book cover font to be safe. Um, but that's really easy. You really don't need a whole bunch of book formatting templates to choose from because all you really need is one with a couple options that you're going to change the font for the for this chapter setting here and then you'll be done and it'll match. There's not really that many choices to make when you're looking at interior book fat formatting. Um, I'll, I'll talk about a few of the styles. Basically um, every chapter page is going to look something like this. There's going to be a first paragraph. The first paragraph is usually left aligned. There's no indent. And then you might have a drop cap, or you might have capitals on the first phrase or the first few words, or maybe both. And then you're going to have your main paragraph style, which is just the same, same font, same spacing, but it's justified. And there's a little bit of an indent. And when we do formatting, you're using the line style to do this indent. You're not using a tab button. 
because we're going to have to strip out all those tabs for interior book formatting. And then you'll have something like chapter one, chapter two, um, could be a special style, and then a big um, chapter heading. You're, on this page, this first page for the book chapters, there's not going to be a heading and there's not going to be a page number on the bottom. And the main text is going to start halfway down the page. And you'll see that consistently in any book, in any genre. You're always going to have a different style for the first paragraph. This one has a little bit of serif on the first phrase instead of the normal serif for the body font. Um, you're going to see the chapter. You're going to see a special, a special font for the chapter title. You might see a quote that has its own special uh, style. But even with all of this, your main text, your body text, is still going to start halfway down the page. Here's another one. So you've got, in this one, they just have a very simple chapter heading, which is 14. They have the whole first sentence in capitals, but no indent. And then that's all. On the second page is where you'll get the more normal style. This still goes halfway down the page, but then the second page, you've got your header. You've got a page number. You can put the page number on the bottom of the page, or you can put it up on the top like this. You can have this centered, or you could have it right aligned. If it's right or left aligned, it's it's probably going to be all the way flush to the same distance as your body text. This one is not. It's in a little bit. Your, your margins to the outside are going to be at least 0.5 inches, at least half an inch. Um, it's tempting sometimes if you have a really big book to want to make that smaller, but less than half an inch makes it look really crowded. You, you'll find examples, um, really big older books, if they're really thick, you might find some that have margins of like 0.2 or 0.3, really narrow margins. Usually those smaller pulp paperbacks, maybe it's only like five by seven inches, so it's got to really cram all the text in there. So they may compromise on spacing because they don't want to have like a 700 page book because that'll eat into profit margins. But in general, you want to have a 0.5 margin on the side. This one has a little bit more of um, an image decoration, but it still starts halfway down. It's got a drop cap and a little bit of capitalization. It's also got the page numbers up on top. Usually on the first page, you're not going to have anything, but on the other pages, you're usually going to have one will have the, the title of the book and the other will have your author name. There's not a lot of examples in here because I'm only showing you usually two pages. Um, here's just a simple sans serif number, which is fine. This one, see, you've got the author on one and you've got the name of the book on the other and they're flush left and flush right. You usually also have a gutter. The gutter is the extra spacing on the inside of the book because a little bit of the spacing, the margins are going to be the same on the left and the right, but there's going to be a little bit of extra room that's eaten up in the gutter. So you can add some space in the gutter, which means that whichever side of the page is inside the book, it's going to have a little bit of extra spacing so that the margins will look the same size. You might have a special style um, for the divider. You might have a special image or icon or something. This one has a little bit of a graphic up here. Um, and this one has the chapter title and the book title instead of the author name. That's a choice you can make. Here's another one. Simple. Um, this is kind of a rough serif. It's kind of a rough um, grunge serif font that they're also using up here for the book title. It's a lot of spacing up here on the book title, and it's also really spread out. You want your headers to also be about 0.5 away from the top. You don't want to be too close to the top. Same with the bottom and the footers, um, which means your body text is going to be down almost an inch away from the top. Here's another one with just a drop cap. It's actually not a drop cap. It goes up instead of down, um, and then no other special formatting on that first chapter. It's got the page numbers down here in brackets. That's a kind of nice idea. You can have it without. Sometimes it's nice to put a little dash or a dot or um, brackets or a special symbol. Page number is going to be pretty small. 
And the page number here, see it comes, it's less than 0 0.5, it's probably like 0 0.3 towards the edge, and that's okay. But you have a lot more spacing up here, and this side spacing is probably 0 0.7 or 0 0.8, so that gives you a lot of space. This is probably too much space on the side. Here's another simple chapter 11. This is an older book, so it's simpler, but there's a nice drop shadow, and the first word is capitalized. This one has a specialty font, and like I was saying, it's fine as long as this specialty font is also the same font that's on the title. Um, if it's not, it might be too weird. Or conversely, um, this looks like a simple serif bold font, probably something like Baybest New or English Gothic. Maybe this is the font that's on the book cover. If so, that's a simple enough font that you could get away with having this stylistic font inside the book. What you don't want is a whole bunch of very different, very stylish decorative fonts because they'll look weird together. It's hard to make more than one stylish decorative font look good with others. This one has a lot of spacing. It's almost kind of like a kid's book, probably too much spacing. This is almost um, double spacing for the line. Usually the line height, 1.5 spacing may be too much. Um, I usually go with 1.3 if I can fit it. That's kind of a nice spacey feeling between the lines, but not too spacey that it looks like you're just trying to bulk your book out. This one has the headers on the bottom. It doesn't have anything up on top. It has a page number and it has the headers on the bottom and on the inside. It's not a choice I would make. It's not something I prefer. Um, it's kind of, it's unusual enough that it looks kind of weird and backwards. And there's really no reason you need to try to be weird and backwards. You can just pick something that's a little bit more normal. <clears throat> Again, like this one, it has a huge amount of space on that first paragraph, which I think is too much. You could do it this way, but it's, I don't think it looks that good and there's really no reason for it. Um, they're just trying to be different or interesting. I'm just flipping through. There's a, a, a almost um, maybe 150 different examples on this gallery that I put up on DIYBookFormats.com and I'll probably add more um, if you want to flip through and look for some style choices. For nonfiction, you might want something a little bit more like this where it has a very small chapter seven and then a really large, nice serif font for the chapter header. For fiction, a lot of times you're just going to have, because a lot of fiction doesn't have a chapter title like this. So you would just have chapter one, chapter two, chapter three with a number or spelled out. You can do special fun stuff for nonfiction, but basically you want to keep things simple. Here's a nice plain one where the first chapter is not indented, but there's no drop cap, there's no special formatting. It's not capitalized in the first um, paragraph. So all it is is the normal paragraph style with one paragraph style. It's an alternate paragraph style that's non-indented. And we'll be doing that in the next video. I'll go through doing this kind of format in Word. Um, and you're setting paragraph styles or font styles so that you don't have to go through and customize the style for every element. You would just highlight this chapter and then click heading one style and you'd have already set it up so that everything is just right. That's also how you'll keep every page of your book um, consistent. This has a lot of space on the bottom and a lot of space here too, almost too much space, um, but it looks really clean for self-help or for, if you can get away with it, I mean, extra spacing will make your book look cleaner and more professional. So it's something to consider. Like if you think about doing a smaller book, like a five by seven book, but you have to cram it all in and make it, um, look too busy or crowded, it might be better to go with a six by nine and put a lot of extra spacing in. You don't want so much spacing that it looks like a kid's book. And that's why you don't want large text. You don't want like a 14 point font size for your body text. Um, but if you have a lot of spacing and a nice, clean, smaller font like this, it can look really good. Here's one with a little bit more of um, style. It's got a special specialty box around the quotes 
a little uh, graphic divider. And then also this, um, not a drop cap, it's just a, a larger script font for the first, the first letter of the paragraph. And um, we'll play with some of that in the next video. I'll be setting some of these st formatting styles up and making some of those choices so we can play with different options. And then I'll show you how to save them as different styles so that you can come back and um, make the changes easily. But the main rule is just don't get too busy. For, I was saying for like a young adult book, which this is, you might want to go graphic heavy, but just be careful it matches and complements the cover art. It doesn't distract or confuse. And for print formatting, like I said, there's really not that many choices. So once you pick a few choices, um, you're just going to use the same thing. You're going to go through and do it with every chapter. And there's really not very much to screw up as long as you get a few things right. So if you download the free templates um, or you get the package of templates from DIYBookFormats.com, you'll have a strong starting point. You can just choose one of those, tweak it a little bit if you want, and then you'll be ready to go once you learn the rules. So that I'm putting all these videos up on DIYBookFormats.com because even if you have the templates, doing the formatting can be tricky, especially in Microsoft Word. It can be kind of, well, extremely frustrating and it'll take you like a week to get through the learning curve. But if you watch a couple of these videos, you should be ready because there's only, I mean, it's not that much to learn if you watch video and you watch me going through and making all the changes because there's not that many things to do. Um, but figuring it out yourself from scratch can take a long time and be pretty frustrating. So you can watch the free videos on this website. And if they're helpful, you can share them with other indie authors who are having trouble formatting their books for print. Thanks. Bye-bye.